So I want to show you some special methods which are to be done for thyroid examination. So there are some special methods. One is called as Pizzolo's method. So what is Pizzolo's method? The Pizzolo's method is that if somebody has got a thyroid swelling, which is very mild, right? So at that time, you can adopt the method, what is called as Pizzolo's method, and the thyroid will become prominent. Now how to do that? Do that? that is to be done that you keep the, you clasp the two hands like this, put the two hands occiput like this, I show you, like this, right? And, and push your head against the resistance of clasped hands. So you push against the resistance of clasped hands, so this is called the Pizzolo's method. The thyroid can, the thyroid becomes prominent. Okay. Are you pushing? Yes. Okay. So the thyroid becomes prominent. In case when there is a mild enlargement of thyroid. Right? Okay. Then there is another method what is called as Lahi's method. L A H H H Y E S Lahi's method. You understand the right? The Lahi's method is that you have to make the thyroid gland. You have to make it prominent. Now, how to make the thyroid gland prominent? The thyroid gland can be made prominent if you push the thyroid gland from one side. Now, where to push? You have to push from. You have to see the thyroid cortex. You cannot push at the trachea. If you push at the trachea. There are chances that trachea is damaged, right? And it may cause choking. It may cause choking. So don't push at the at the at what is called as at the tracheal rings. Rather, you push at the thyroid cortex. So one side I am pushing. So I can push it by fingers like this. You understand the point? Or I can push it by fingers like this. Or like this, I put a thumb like this so I push it like this so you can see this side has become prominent so once this side has become prominent that means this side the thyroid <coughs> thyroid lobe on this side it has come out of tracheoesophageal groove so it comes out of it and it becomes prominent so once once it has come out of tracheoesophageal groove then you take another hand and start palpating it start palpating it but you have to palpate the posterior medial surface of posterior medial surface of thyroid gland. So you insert your finger behind the sternocleidomastoid muscle. This is sternocleidomastoid muscle. So push it. Insert here like this and try to feel the posterior medial surface of, of thyroid gland. Right? So this is this is what we do. Or it can be done, the push can be given by a fist. Push can be given by a fist. There are the two techniques. So I can give a push by the fist like this and start palpating the thyroid gland like this. But you have to avoid the choking. So push should be given at thyroid cartilage and then do it behind the pulpate behind the sternocleidomastoid and try to observe the posterior medial surface of the thyroid gland. So this method is called as Lahi's method. The another method is called Kryl's method. Another method is called as Kryl's method. So Kryl's method is done whenever there is a small nodule is there or small enlargement of thyroid is there. So at that time what you do you put the thumb. You put the Thumb. So you put the thumb on the lobe, on the lateral lobe like this. You understand my point? You put the thumb and you you just push it a little bit this side. So pushing it this side, pushing it this side, you actually pushing it this side and then put the thumb here on the other other side of the lobe and start palpating. Start palpating. And you can just keep it here, ask the patient to swallow. So you swallow. So while swallowing, I can just palpate the thyroid gland. I can observe if there is any 
nodule. Do you just swallow again? Yes. Swallow again? Yes. So I do now this side. Like this side, I push it. So I keep the finger like this. So swallow. Yes. Swallow. So I am palpating like this while swallowing. This is called as Kryl's method. So Pizzolo's method, Kryl's method, and Lahi's method. The another method is called as Coker's method. Coachers are Coker's method. Now Coachers or Coker's method is when when there is a large enlargement of thyroid, especially if it is due to thyroid carcinoma. The thyroid carcinoma it compresses the tracheal rings. You understand my point? Or it damages the tracheal rings due to compression. There occurs decalcification and osteo uh, tracheomalacia in case of long-standing thyroid carcinoma. So with the result, this walls of the thyroid cartilage, they just collapse. They collapse like this. So it becomes like a slit. It becomes like a slit appearance. So it becomes like a sheath of a sword. Like a sheath of sword. You know the sword, when we take the sword, we put it in the sheath like this. So that sheath, sheath of the sword is called a scabbard. That is called a scabbard. So exactly it becomes like a scabbard. There is a, only a slit like aperture now in the, in the, in the trachea because of compression of the lateral walls due to thyroid enlargement. We call it as scabar trachea and it is usually seen on the radiological uh, when we do the radiology of the person. It, can, it is a radiological appearance that slit like appearance or scabar trachea is found especially in the carcinoma of thyroid. So now you want to see you want to see whether it whether the compression because now this can cause compression so once there is a small slit like appearance so little bit of more compression will produce stridor so how to do the cocker's test you put the two hands like this and try to compress the thyroid gland so i'm just compressing it right and if there is a stridor in the patient then we say cocker's test is positive you understand me that is that these are the special tests we do for for the for the thyroid enlargement okay done now now what happens that now i tell you how to palpate the trachea when there is a thyroid, thyroid enlargement now you know when thyroid is swollen like this then you won't be able to see where the trachea is and whether the trachea is deviated or not. So there are two methods for it to check whether trachea is central or it is not central. One is that you take the finger above the suprasternal notch like this, above the suprasternal notch and you feel for the tracheal rings. You feel for the tracheal rings, suprasternal notch. If, if you feel for the tracheal rings here, it means that trachea is central. You understand my point? But sometimes what happens is that this area will be occupied like this by the thyroid gland, enlarged thyroid gland. Then you won't be able to insert the finger in the suprasternal notch. So at that time, you, you, you just palpate from above. At least you can see the Adam's apple or you can see this thyroid cartilage. So just go palpate from the thyroid cartilage downwards like this. So where I am feeling the tracheal rings. You understand my point? So you see, uh, first if you judge the thyroid cartilage, I see that thyroid cartilage is in line with the suprasternal notch. It is in line with the nose and suprasternal nose. So it appears that it is in the midline. Even if there is a thyroid gland, but Adam's apple we are seeing. So it is at the Adam's apple. You have to see whether alignment of Adam's apple is in line with suprasternal notch and the nose. Or you move down if some area is uh, bare here if some area is still free here then you move down from the th thyroid cartilage start palpating like this and if you can find the tracheal rings any of these tracheal rings and you can judge 
whether it is in line with suprasternal notch or not. If it is in line with suprasternal notch, right, then it means the trachea is central. So this is how we check check for tracheal deviation in case of enlarged thyroid gland. Okay. There is another method called as Nebziger's method. The another method of seeing the exophthalmos or proptosis is Nebziger's method. Sometimes you are not able to see, to make out whether there is a bulging of eyes or not. So we adopt a method what is called as Nebziger's method. So Nebziger's method is that you remain behind the patient, keep the head slightly extended like this, then you look from above. So I look from above like this. You understand my point? I look from above like this over the supraorbital regions. These are supraorbital regions. So if there is an exophthalmos, then eyeball will come. It will come the in front of supraorbital region. It will bulge like this. But here I don't see. I don't see that eyeball has come out of supraorbital region. But if there is an exophthalmos, then along this line, along this line, the eyeball will bulge like this along the supraorbital region. So if you look like this, if you have got doubt or anything, which is called as Nebziger's method, right? Done for uh, assessing the proptosis or exophthalmos. Okay, done.